back. Can we stand to our feet this morning? Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you. In Psalms 89, it says, Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to you, Lord? Among the heavenly beings, uh, um, among who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones, and awesome above all who are around him. O Lord, God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you. Come on, our God is faithful this morning. I'm encouraged just as heaven is bowing down and worshiping our amazing God this morning, we have the opportunity to bow our hearts, our minds, the worries, the cares of this last week or the worries and the cares of what's coming up before us to come before our God and say, God, right now, nothing else matters more but you. There is nothing that will take my worship. And in this moment, in this time that we have together, all, all, all together as, as the church, as the body, we have the opportunity to fix our gaze upon Jesus, to declare of his faithfulness, to declare of his goodness, what he's done in our life and what he's gonna continue doing. And that's good news, church, amen. Just as heaven worships him right now, we have the opportunity to join in and declare of his faithfulness and of his goodness, fix our eyes upon him, no matter what it is, no matter what circumstance, whatever might be trying to, to be trying to distract us or take us from our worship right now in this moment. We fix our gaze upon him. We fix our eyes upon him. And he is faithful to come and speak to the hearts, to the minds of each and every single one of us this morning through his word, within worship, by his spirit. Amen. He is faithful and he is good. And this morning, can we just take a minute just to cry out to him in your own words with your heart. Just cry out to him and just declare of his faithfulness, declare of his goodness, declare even this, in this morning, I just even sense just declare your testimony of what he's done in your life, that maybe there was moments in your life that you were, you felt like you were in the lowest of lows and you've seen his hand of faithfulness upon your life. Begin to declare your testimony, saying, God, I was once here, but you raised me. And now I stand in this moment to declare of your goodness. Maybe you were, you were stuck in, in, a, in, a, in a sickness and, in, and you felt no hope, but God said, no, I, 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 I've spared you. I have a plan for your life. And now you stand whole and holy before him. Jesus, we declare, Lord, may your presence and spirit, Lord God, fill this place this morning, God. As, a, as you are already here, God, I just pray, may our hearts just be open, Lord God, to receive every good and great thing that you have for our lives this morning. Our hearts are open, Lord God. Our ears are open to hear, our eyes are, are open to see, Lord God, what you're doing in this place, God. We love you, we bless you. Jesus, be lifted high in this place. Be lifted high in this place, Jesus. The lamb that was slain upon the cross, we give you glory, we give you praise. Our worship is yours this morning, God. We give you glory, Jesus. All the praise and all the worship, Jesus. All the adoration, we give you praise. Jesus, we honor you in this place. We give you worship. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus.
to die. He carried our pain. He carried our shame. He carried uh, healing. He carried our, our, our freedom on that cross. And this morning, can we just be reminded and with thanksgiving in our hearts and with praise on our lips, can we just begin to exalt the name of Jesus? Can we begin to lift up his name in thanksgiving? Come on, I've just been so encouraged these last few days of of, of thankfulness in my life. There's so much to be thankful for, but he is the ultimate thing to be grateful for. The one that has given us life and life abundantly. What else is there to be grateful for, but for the one that has given us life? Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you this morning. Jesus, we come with thanksgiving. We say thank you for your faithfulness, God. We say thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done. With all our hearts are open. Come on, just take a moment, moment, cry out to him. Shila ba 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 
remember your sacrifice this morning. We thank you that death could not hold you, that there is no, no boasting in sin and death, God, but that you have won the victory, God. We thank you. We thank you this morning that we have rest standing before you, God, that the veil was torn, that we can stand before you face to face, God, and that we can know you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you paid the ultimate price, that you have no rival, you have no equal. We thank you that there is none like you, none compares to you, Jesus. We lift you high above every other name. God, we lift you high above any circumstance. We lift you high above. We thank you, Lord.
Continue just praising Him. Continue just worshiping. we give you all the glory we give you all the praise we thank you for your presence that's in this place right now we thank you for your presence that is setting us free for your presence that is transforming us right now we thank you Jesus we thank you God that you are worthy to be praised we thank you that this morning that this day we have a reason to praise we don't have to stand here, but we can look and see and know of your goodness and we can praise you with full confidence, with boldness, because you have defeated death, because you have raised us back to life, because you have given us hope, because you have given us a future, because you have given us something to look forward to. And we praise you, Jesus, for that. We thank you, Jesus, for that. We thank you, Jesus, that we can stand here boldly. We can stand here confidently because of what you've done, not because of the good things that we've done or our achievements, but because of how good you are. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Just begin to thank God for all that he's done in your life. Begin to thank God for all that he has done in our lives. We thank you. Jesus, that you are good. We thank you, Lord, that you have set us free. I thank you, Lord, that you have brought me out of a place of darkness, that you have brought me out of a place of hopelessness, that you have brought me out of a place of fear, but you have placed me into a place of hope, into a place of confidence, into a place of your presence. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that your presence is here and that we can praise you together in this place. I thank you, Lord God. We bless your mighty name. We thank you so much, Lord, for what you have done in our lives. And we just give all thanks to you. We give everything to you, God. And we praise your mighty name, Lord God. We praise your name in this place. And we say thank you. We say thank you for what you've done. We say thank you for what you will do. And we thank you that your presence is here right now. I bless every single person. Let our hearts be open to hear what you have for us. Not from what the speaker is going to be saying, but Holy Spirit, for what you want to be speaking to every single person in this place right now. We praise your mighty name and we give you all honor, all praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's take a moment, turn to your neighbor, tell them two things that you're thankful for. It's Thanksgiving weekend after all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Come on, guys. 
It's a good morning. It's good to see every single person here. Um, if it's your first time here, second time here, or if you're a guest here, I'm not going to make you stand up or, or raise your hand, but it's so good to have you guys here. It's so awesome to have people, new people coming in all the time. And if, if you are a member here if, or if you go here constantly, make sure if you see a new face, if you see somebody that you've never met before, go up to them, say hi, welcome them to this place, to our home. Make them feel welcome. Uh, before we hop into offering, there's a few announcements that I'd like to go over. Starting with this Wednesday, we have for the ladies, ladies fellowship night plus wreath making this Wednesday. We have a QR code. Please, please, please register so that we know how much materials to bring. So ladies, if you are sitting here, make sure to pull out your phone, scan that right now, zoom in. And it's going to be an awesome time just for all the women to get together, for the women to meet each other. If you, Maybe you haven't met some of, some of them before. And just please be sure to register to make it easier for our team to make this event happen. It is this Wednesday from 6 to 9 p.m. Next we have Hot Meals Outreach. And this is this Saturday, which is December 3rd. We'll be making and delivering warm meals to our community and, and just people that need help and need warm meals. We also, for this, we have a QR code and it's very important for you to sign up so that you can choose a slot and to make sure not everybody's bringing a Caesar salad but that, you know, there's going to be a variety of a few items. So please register, please sign up for a time slot. Uh, this is going to be an awesome opportunity to serve our community and just host our city, which is why we're here. Uh, next, we have Talents for Jesus. This is going to be December 6th, which is next Tuesday evening. Talents for Jesus is an evening where we dedicate just a whole evening for children and, and young kids to, to display their talents that God has given them, the, the, to display their abilities that God has given them. This is an opportunity for them from such a young age to not bury them like the, like the foolish worker, but to display them for the glory of God and, and really be confident in the gifts and abilities that God has given them. So even if you don't have kids, show up, support, and it, it's going to be an awesome time. And then last thing is... December 8th through 10th, I think everybody already knows what this is, but this is men's camp, men's retreat. Hoorah, I like that. This is for all the men ages 12 and up. Last year was an awesome, awesome time, and I know this year is going to be even better. So even if you weren't there last year, even if, you, if this is your first time hearing about it, Please sign up. And I want to say just to any single person out there, especially more on the younger side, if, the, if finances are the only thing that are stopping you from going on this trip, don't let that be the case. Please, please, please come forward and just let us know. And we would love to help you out to be, for you to be there. Because uh, if that's the only thing stopping you, then, then, then we can help you out with that. Because we want to make sure that you're there. So please, all men ages 12 and up, Sign up. Wives, nudge your husbands. Make sure that they're there. Men's retreat. It's going to be an awesome time. And it's, it's coming up a lot quicker than, uh, than I thought. I, I just realized it's, it's almost just two weeks away. So please register uh, and, and be there. And now, um, just a quick word of offering before we go into service. Uh, this, this week, specifically these past few weeks, one thing that I've just been thinking upon and one thing that's been in my mind is, is, is hope, is our hope. And you know what I realized? So oftentimes it's easy to place our hope and our confidence and trust into things that are on this world. Things that maybe aren't bad things, things that are good things, but things that are not the Lord, not our God. And it's so easy for us to place our hope in, in our job. It's so easy for us to place our hope in our careers. It's so play, easy to place our hope in our bank accounts. It's so easy to place our hope in even our health, in, in my talents, in the, in the abilities that God has given me. It's so easy to place my hope in what I can do. It's so easy to place my hope in what I've achieved or my hope in, in my plans. But I want to say none of those things 
are where our hope can be sourced from. None of those things, those are all awesome things. And I, I pray all the time for my health. I pray for my family's health. I pray for my work. I pray for all of those things. And I pray that God bless all those things. And those things are awesome. And God wants to use these, those things to bless you and to bless the people around you. But none of those things can be my source of hope. Because those things are all rooted here. Those things are all from here. And all of those things can fail. All of those things can fail. You know, with one, one day we can, we can have a, a cushy job and the next moment it's gone. One day we can have a, a few numbers in our bank account and something can happen and it's gone. One day we have a good health and the next moment it can all be gone. Our talents, abilities, one day they might just be useless. Our achievements might mean nothing. But our hope that is placed and rooted in God will never, ever fade. It will never become irrelevant. It will never lose its power. And I just want to read Romans chapter 15, verse 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that it says, pray that God the source of hope, not I pray that your health, the source of, source of hope, your, your finances, your money, the source of hope, but God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace. When our hope is placed in those other things, it's so easy for it to dwindle and, and one moment the economy is this, the next moment the economy is that, one moment our health is this, one moment our health is that. But when our Peace, when our joy is, is coming from a place of hope that is placed in Jesus Christ, our joy will remain constant. Our peace will remain constant. And I just want us to even reflect that in our lives is where is our peace and our joy sourced from? Is it from hope that is placed in Jesus Christ or is it placed in our bank accounts or our job or our finances? And as we even take time to give right now, I, wanna, I want us to even just realize and I'll, and understand that our giving is not a reflection of just what we need to do. But our giving is a reflection of where our trust is rooted in. And so as we're going to be praying right now, and the buckets are going to be passed forward, I just want us to bow our heads and, and we're going to thank God that he is our source of hope and that there is no other source out there. God, we thank you so much for your mighty power. We thank you so much that you are our source of hope, that there is no other source that we can rely on but your Supply is infinite, and we thank you for that. I thank you, God, that you bless every single area of our lives, and we pray for those areas of our lives, but we pray that our hope will always be rooted in your word, in you, God. And I thank you that you have a mighty plan, that you have a mighty purpose, and that there is so much joy, and that there is so much peace in your name, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor, and we give you everything that we are able to give, God. We thank you so much and we just bless this service amen amen and now I would like to invite up our own Mrs. Julie Lynchuk can you guys please welcome her as she shares a testimony good morning church <laughs> um I am so happy to be here today. I'm so happy to call this home, call you guys family, and uh, even happier to just share about what God did when I just traveled to Ukraine a couple weeks ago. I got back, five weeks flew by super quick. I feel like I was just standing here and um, you guys were praying for me and stuff, but um, I'm so excited to just share the goodness of God. He's so good. Everything Mark talked about this morning, if you guys go home and don't remember anything, remember that Christ is our hope and our hope is in the Lord because even last weekend I was talking to somebody, it was so interesting because um, they just 
they came over to our house right after second service and we're asking them, hey, how's everything going? They're like, oh, it's so hard. And like, we just, I'm like, we're like, hey, like, is it your job? What's going on? They're like, no, it's just, you know, just tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow? And then this, and they start listing a whole list of things. And I'm like, whoa, did you guys listen to the sermon on <laughs> at church, especially second service? It was, we, I listened to it live and it was just, you know, they were, we were talking about how, um, our God is so big that there's absolutely nothing impossible for him. And so, and it's so interesting to just, even sometimes I question myself, I'm like, what's the point of all this? What's the point of Sundays? You know, we come to church, we get all dressed up and we look nice and we come and we sit on the benches and we shout and sing and pray and stuff like that. But then we go home and our weeks just go by as we're just trying to make it. We're just trying to make it through whatever is happening in our lives. We're just trying to make it through the difficulties or whatever else is going on. But I um, just want you guys to be encouraged today. And, you know, as, as the weeks go by, as we go home, like, continue to set your mind on the things that are above, you know, because what we have in our hands and what we have inside is so much bigger. And it's so much, it's, it's so powerful. It's when we when we recognize the power that we have inside of us and the power that we possess we literally can move mountains and so um just coming home i so encouraged and while we were in ukraine we um we had a chance to go into the front lines we delivered like over 25,000 tons of potatoes humanitarian aid food and people are living in you know basements and stuff like that just stuff that you guys probably already heard and seen in pictures, but it's real, you know, people are going through stuff, and again, like, it's so, it's encouraging to be in a place where we can, can bring hope, you can bring joy, you can bring that peace, and it's really just because of Jesus, it's, it's who Jesus is, and um, as we were coming home from, like, the front lines trip, we, that was the day where all of Ukraine was getting bombed everywhere, and so we were getting calls from our family, and it was just, like, social media, everything was kind of booming, and, like, this, this sudden kind of sense of, like, oh, wow, uncertainty and fear kind of gripped all of us, and we started to pray and break everything off, but coming home, coming to Kiev, that's, we were kind of based Coming to Kiev, God gave us so many opportunities. We went back to Mushun, which was a town that we worked with last time when I was in Ukraine. And getting an opportunity to talk to people and um, them sharing how they saw seven rockets fly over their head and hit the town that was right next to them. And fear gripped them, like that anxiety, that that. Um, Break, nervous system breakdown and one lady was sharing that when her daughter is having like actual issues because her nervous system is like because just because of that fear and we had an opportunity to share with people and say hey like because these in Mushun these people um that lived there we had an opportunity to do Saturday picnics with them it was kind of like more like hey here's Jesus but then we did discipleship with them and then we did life with them and so even coming back this time we had an opportunity because they already know who Christ is they already received him in their heart but we had an opportunity to um, even share from my own life just moments of of you know when fear was coming into to my heart and the enemy tried to lie and put things into my uh, my mind that were not real, that it was creating this whole big, you know, avalanche. And I had a moment where I was like, nope, I know who God is. I need to stop thinking of that. I need to think of, you know, God, my God is mighty. My God is bigger than that. If, if this is not where I need to be or this is what I need not need to do, then God has something different planned for me. And so I had an opportunity to share of some like uh, recent things that were happening in my life and just encouraging people to, hey, like now you know Christ, but that's the next step. Like, you know Christ, but allow peace and allow God to fill your minds and as as fear is gripping your mind as uncertainty and as, as soon as stuff is coming into your mind say hey no stop like I know who my God is I know who I am in Jesus Christ and I'm not going to let this fear grip my mind and and take a hold of my body and and affect me in a negative way so that was such an that's such a privileged I don't know place to be and even in Kiev people that are you know people that are church people are in church we had an opportunity because it was constant you know like um 
sirens going off, people go rushing into their um, basements and stuff like that after it just being so quiet for so long. Again, we had so many opportunities to be in a place of like, hey, who are you in Christ? Who are you? You know, you have the ability to, to have control over your mind, over the thoughts that are coming into your mind. And so that was, that was a huge privilege. And um, there were a couple of weeks we also served in uh, like teen youth camps that were uh, one of the first camps that we served at was just kids that were pretty much either new believers or didn't know Christ. And so we had an ability to talk about, you know, just uh, them as a believer, their identity, who they are in Christ. And a lot of these kids, half of them are probably from okay homes. They had family members, parents, but a lot of the others were living with grandpa because parents were not in their life. And one girl specifically, we were hanging, stringing up lights and, um, I'm trying to get to know her, and she's like, I'm like, so, you know, she's like, oh, I'm just so tired. I'm like, why are you tired? And she's like, oh, I was, I was up watching a movie with my friend, and um, after talking, I'm like, oh, is your friend here at the camp, too? She's like, no, my friend is 40 years old, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so a lot of these kids that were at the camp were absolutely broken, and so we had an opportunity, and, and, and the Lord moved in such a mighty way. And the second camp that we were at was like, it was we called it revival camp and kids were um, just learning to hear the voice of God, learning to know who they are in Christ. It was like we had sessions that were almost like mini encounters of, you know, letting go of, of past, forgiving family members, forgiving parents, forgiving brothers and sisters. And God was doing a lot of deep things and in their hearts and deep things in, in their lives. And so it was such an honor. And, um, you all had a chance to be a part of that. So thank you very much. The finances that we took with us, we were able to and uh, put into that camp. And so pretty much cover that second camp. And over 75 kids got to experience Jesus, know who he is. And um, that was such a huge blessing. So thank you so much for being a part of everything, constantly praying. And um, may the Lord bless you guys. Thank you. Praise God. Can I ask the worship team to come up and can I ask everyone to stand? We're going to pray. We're going to pray for what's happening in this world. You know, as you look around, there's definitely a lot of chaos. There's definitely a lot of confusion. But we, the church, we know where God called us to be. And he called us to intercede. He called us to love. He called us to participate. We're not called to do a lot of things that the world is encouraging us to do but we are called to many things that Christ calls us to and one of those things is to intercede to love to sacrifice and it's beautiful knowing that many many people are getting up going some locally in Ukraine others coming from different parts of the world but also us that are able to even participate financially if we can go ourselves but right now can we lift up our voice and can we pray for those who need the help those who are in those bunkers those who are in 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 those basements in fear let the presence of God touch them and we know that where the spirit is there is freedom amen God we thank you we intercede and we thank you that you call the church all over the world to rise up God where hatred and, and division tries to spread Lord God we can stand in truth and in love Lord God we can stand in intercede and we pray for every single person that's there on the ground Lord God sharing the gospel doing the work with their own hands Lord God and we pray let them be strengthened in Jesus mighty name God but we also ask for the church all over the world us included Lord God to not be not be Lord God uh, indifferent but be sensitive to what you're calling us to do Lord God that we would find ourselves faithful find ourselves participating Lord God to bring the gospel to those who need it Lord we bless and we pray for peace we pray for peace not just in Ukraine but all over the world peace peace Lord God the peace that you give which is not connected to circumstances around us we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus name amen
после того, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old man shall dream dreams your young man shall see visions and also on my man servants and my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls hallelujah, hallelujah. We're living during this time that Joel prophesied. This is not sometime in the future, but this is now. When 2,000 years ago, in the upper room, in the upper room, about 120 people gathered, and the power of God came down. There was a sound in Jerusalem as of a mighty rushing wind. And something started to happen. Thousands of people who came to worship, who came to the mountain where the temple was built. Suddenly they turned and they set their attention to the place of the supper room that did not attract in itself this wasn't a great building or the temple but something was there that separated them from a beautiful temple the Holy Spirit came to that place and something started to take place and now 2,000 years later the power of God it has not stopped it has not decreased it has not become weaker and Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you His church His people filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and we live in these days whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved hallelujah 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 all glory and honor to you Jesus we give you the glory we're thankful to you that this time is a special time for the church your kingdom is in power we thank you that you've called us to be participants of this harvest of this time that we live in we thank you for the Holy Spirit for the power of the Holy Spirit for your anointing that breaks every yoke that opens up the prison doors and sets the captives free we thank you for your presence for the freedom we're thankful to you and we give you all the glory and everybody said Amen Hallelujah Praise God you may be seated beloved thank you worship team I'm happy to greet you this Sunday morning we're going to take a little more time before we go to prayer I want to share what's on my heart lately we're expecting for God's movement we desire something special to start taking place we ask different questions why do certain things not happen you might feel like God's holding something back there's a position when God holds things back but there's also a position when the church is not ready 
Знаете, один человек you рассказывал, know, one man said, что когда он купил старый дом, that when he purchased an old house и стал делать там ремонт, and started doing a remodel there, и не хватало у него средств, and he didn't have enough resources, и кто-то ему сказал, and someone said to him, что в старом доме, hey, in the old house, надо поменять всю сантехнику, you need to replace all the plumbing. Он посмотрел, he looked, вроде бы на вид все хорошо, seemingly everything looked all right. Вроде бы как все держится. Seemingly everything was pretty, pretty strong, and so he left it as is to save some money. But some time passed when everything was done in the remodel. The walls were painted. There was a new floor laid, but the plumbing was old. And when they turned on the water, pressure rose, and the pipes started to burst. And everything was flooding. You know, there are things in our life where the Holy Spirit knows that if His presence comes, something in our lives will be broken. He cannot use old pipes that needs to have fresh water flowing, but where there's clogging, He cannot let that water flow. He needs our vessels to be clean. That's what the word of God says. Who will be cleansed from all things will be a vessel of honor. Apostle Paul says for each one to be able to maintain his vessel in holiness and honor. In other words, we are responsible for how my vessel looks for the Holy Spirit to move in my midst. I believe with all of my heart that this time is when the Holy Spirit has led the church up to a point where we need to take the responsibility for our own condition to be holy, to be righteous, to be in Christ Jesus, to be people who are as in His hands, as His weapon and His vessels whom He can use. We can pray for the harvest and never be a participant of the harvest. We can talk about God using us and always being on the sidelines for one reason because our vessels are not in the condition they need to be in. I want to talk about that today. The first scripture that I'm going to read is Galatians chapter 5. It's verse 1 and verse 13. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ had made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And verse 13 says, for you brethren have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love serve one another. I've titled this topic, Stand in the Freedom that Christ has given us. Freedom does not come because I have taught myself something. Freedom comes thanks to the, what Jesus accomplished for us. There is no other foundation for me to be free except to receive everything that Jesus has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. You know, we've all been born with a lot of flaws because the word of God says we were born in sin. As one man who was a sinner he committed sin. His name is Adam. And it says, in him all have sinned. Therefore, we are sinners. We have that sinful nature. That's what, we're not born holy. We're born sinners with great flaws. In life, they come to, they come to life. Certain things hold people in addictions. You know, there are people who consider themselves righteous. But there is no righteousness outside of God. There is no holiness without Jesus. Jesus is our cleansing. We cannot on our own be righteous and holy. You know, today, I want to touch this idea that we are incapable of changing ourselves. And in general, the word itself, to change, 
что мы меняем. What can we change? Знаете, слово Божье говорит. You know, the word of God says. Мы должны преображаться. We need to be transformed. Мы не изменяемся. We are not changed. Мы преображаемся. We are transformed. Если бы мы изменили свою плоть. If we could change our flesh. Тогда не было нужды приходить к Иисусу. Но мы не способны. Able, Наша плоть, она не изменяется. Она продана греху. Поэтому ее Бог определил к смерти. И Слово Божье говорит, что плоть, она распита со страстями и похотями. Она должна умереть. Не измениться, но умереть. Но что преображается? Наша душа, soul, когда наш внутренний человек рождается для Бога, the Lord, он похож looks, не на кого-то, like но на Иисуса, like Christ, потому что внутренний человек, man, рожденный от Бога, God, о нем сказано, что он имеет те же самые качества, которые у Бога. Поэтому That's why внутренность наша, our inner man has perfection, святость, has holiness, праведность, has righteousness, attributes, has all the attributes, all the characteristics that Jesus Christ has. Знаете, Иисус, you know, Jesus, Он не просто где-нибудь. He's not just somewhere. Он внутри нас. He is inside of us. Павел говорит, Paul says, Христос в вас, Christ in you, упование славы, the hope of glory. Где Он? Where? В рожденном моем the духе. Inner man. Наша душа, he, она soul, преображается, uh, it когда подчиняется духу. When it submits itself to the spirit. Но если мы живем по плоти, but if we live according to the flesh, мы умрем. We will die. Но если по духу, but if according to the spirit, то духом then by the Spirit we will put to death the works of the flesh. You know the strongholds they come with age. Something is confirmed in my life and becomes firm. Let's also read these scriptures that talk about that it's not by our strength, not by our abilities, and not even our human authority can deliver us from ourselves. Psalm 33, verse 16 and 17 and 18, it says, No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those whose ho who hope in his mercy. Here it says that the king is not saved by the multitude of his army. Исполина не защитит великая сила. And, and a, horse, um, a horse is a vain hope for safety. Как ты великан? How a giant, a mighty giant, a mighty man. Но говорит силу его не But he's not delivered by his great strength. Знаете, против греха you know, sin, нету силы. There is no strength. Не может человек себе натренировать, чтобы не грешить. A man cannot train himself to stop sinning. Он все равно будет грешить. He will continue to be a sinner. The only thing that took place when Jesus judged the sin in the flesh, when he took the sin on his own body, we see this in Peter, for us to be freed from sin and for us to live for truth. Sin that came into our lives from the conception this inheritance sinful inheritance that was passed on from Adam and sin reigned in our lives we cannot get rid of it it says the king is not saved by the multitude of his army yes as a king you can but he says no. And a mighty man is not delivered by his great strength. And a horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall be delivered by its great strength. And verse 18 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. The humbled heart 
that humbles before the Lord and says, I can do nothing, Lord. I am powerless, but I know that you held the victory. You destroyed the works of the devil. You judged sin in the flesh. And today, receiving you, I receive your freedom. That's why in Galatians, we read that it's a stand in the freedom that the Lord has given you. Not a denomination, not a politician that gives you freedom. People say, oh, we live in a free country. You know, we can feel free and act the way we want, but that's not real freedom. Freedom is when we're free from sin. It's when we're free from the influence of the world. And this freedom is only given by Jesus Christ. And the Word of God says, stand in that freedom that Christ has given you. And do not submit yourself to once again be slaves. Once Jesus preaching the word he said verily verily I say unto you everyone who commits sin is a slave of the sin who commits sin he's a slave he obeys sin he cannot do otherwise because he's a slave but he says a slave cannot be eternal only a son can remain in the house forever. And whom the son sets free, whom Jesus sets free, is free indeed. In Christ is true freedom. You know, when strongholds come into our lives, they start to control us. One of the modern strongholds in our days is the stronghold of formalities. It's one of these widespread things in Christianity today to hold on to a specific form that makes people hypocrites. There are different forms out there. But there's a form that shows something that everything's good in my life. So many people who are in prison or slavery, but outwardly they demonstrate freedom. We are used to these forms. There's a form of worship services. And I'm for order and forms. But when a person nearly holds on to the former outward expression, just a specific setup or an order, it becomes a stronghold in his life because it becomes important to them for everything to be according to that form. The form, this bottle is a form in itself, but it has a purpose. The bottle is not made for the sake of being a bottle, but this bottle was purposed to have something inside. We use this bottle not to cherish the bottle in itself but to take what's inside and when we use what's inside this bottle no longer has value we toss it you know no matter what the form is it has a purpose there needs to be substance if there is no substance this loses its purpose this bottle loses its purpose if there is no substance any form without a substance becomes a stronghold and people hold on to that but the substance is the presence of the Holy Spirit it is the infilling of His Spirit it is what brings true freedom into our lives Paul says where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom some people consider that if the Spirit is there and that's freedom 
прыгал, теперь I used to not jump, and now I'll jump. And people interpret фактор. that to these outward expressions. But it can also become a form in itself. To a certain руки. song, we start to lift our hands. Песню, to another song, we start to do these motions. And all that is okay. Form, but when that form is all there is, Люди then it becomes a stronghold. Бога, people stop living with God, but start to live in the form that they're used to. These outward appearances. But our goal is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit to fill us. Then when He comes, freedom genuinely comes. Isaiah says, the yoke will fall off. No matter what the chains are, when the anointing comes, then the yoke is broken. People become free. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has anointed me. And then He says, that this anointing will drive him to set the captives free, to open up the prison doors, for the blind to see, for the lame to walk, for the mute to speak. That anointing, that power of the Holy Spirit, that is his presence, that is the Spirit of the Lord. And freedom comes. Freedom from this influence. You know, today we live in a time where we desire the movement of God. But we don't desire to place ourselves on the altar. Lord, you do something. Take me the way I am. You know, but we need to continue. Take me, Lord, and kill me on that altar that no longer I would live, but Christ would live in all things in my life. That when the ruler of the world comes, I could boldly say he has nothing in me. He will be judged and he will be cast out because I am no longer here, but Jesus lives here. I laid myself on the altar, but today we hear prayers Lord, take me the way I am. Use me. We're not needed the way we are. Everything that is by him, it comes from him. And then it accomplishes a work in me. And then that, what he accomplished, this fruit, it will, he will be satisfied with the result. It will come back to him. That's why everything that is not of God needs to be uprooted in my life. Everything that the Father did not plan, we need to give it back for him to pull that out of our lives. The devil holds on to those things. Hey, how are you going to survive without that? You're so used to this or this in your life. That's your way of life. That's why Christians have now set the uh, rules on their time. When I go to church, I dedicate that time for the Lord. But when I go to a different place, that's my time. You know, people who have given themselves to God, they no longer have my time. Everything they have belongs to Him. Everything that God accomplished, I lay it down and dedicate it my whole life to what God has accomplished. You know, demons hold on to these things and they say, no, no. This is the time for the Lord, but you also need you time. What does it mean to have my time? I understand that there's family. I understand there's work. I understand there's many things present in our life. And in these areas, God needs to be the number one thing in all these things. That means it's not for me. If I work, I do it as unto the Lord. When I'm in my family, everything I do, I do it as unto the Lord. Then, His name will be glorified. I no longer live for myself, but for the one who died for me and raised back to life. I live for Jesus. This is a normal life of a Christian. Not some special life of a Christian. Not a supernatural life of a Christian. But to live for Jesus is a normal life for, of a Christian. Where we dedicate ourselves in every aspect of our life only for Him. Then, the presence of the Holy Spirit starts to break yokes, starts to open up the prison doors. Everything that held me back, He will break that. That is the freedom when the Spirit of God comes. 
Some people say, we live in the modern world and you need to adjust yourself to the modern rhythm of the world. Today, Christians think, how do I fit in to the rhythm of this world? They make seminars how to be closer to the world for this world not to consider us foreigners. Where did they get this from? This is not the spirit of the gospel. This is the spirit of the false church of Babylon which interprets itself to be mixed. There were mixings of languages. That's why the name of the city was Babylon. Mixing. But the church is not Babylon. It is a new Jerusalem of pure gold. There is no mixture. That's what Paul says about the church. It is without spot or blemish. That's why his church is a glorious church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we desire to see his glory, what he determined for our days, because some people, they will miss this motion for one reason, because they've drawn themselves to this world. God led us out of this world. Yes, he didn't lead us into the desert. He didn't break, bring us into the wilderness. He didn't say build monasteries. Build big fences around yourself so that you can hide yourself in there. No, he brought us out of the world with one goal in mind. For us to be strengthened in the Lord and to influence the world around us. To influence the world around us. Not with our own strength, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. Not with what we are capable of doing, but with what he accomplishes and his power is mighty it influences if we understand this today then we will present ourselves as vessels that needs to be in honor if something is wrong in my life today is the day where Joel said call upon the name of the Lord when he's near everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord it's today maybe some of you are bound by certain things you know today Christianity has separated itself into two categories one category they are for firm rules and for laws and, and it's good to have rules but if there's no substance behind it this brings no, no use where the spirit of the Lord is that is the substance then freedom comes the other extreme is do whatever you want why do whatever you want attitude that's coming to the church where they couldn't decide in the church the problem with sin they couldn't resolve divorces today what we used to be ashamed of saying 10 years ago about the legalization of same-sex marriages today these same-sex marriages are accepted into the church when we say this today some will say oh that will never come we had a fellowship with, with pastors who have churches in the Pentecostal regions and they have gatherings in those and they said there in the midst of Pentecostal churches they're discussing these topics do you know why this is happening? because the presence of the Holy Spirit has left and then we need to solve these things somehow and the simplest solution is to legalize things but how do we deal with those people today? they're already pushed out you know homosexuality is a sin that's what the scriptures tell us it stands on the same level as adulterers and those who commit adultery drunkards, murderers and homosexuality 
he says such do not inherit the kingdom of God today they open doors and say hey we must love all I want to emphasize something we must accept everyone but we do not legalize everything we do not approve everything there's a difference between accepting and approving we are open to all with one goal in mind for the Holy Spirit to touch them for the anointing to touch them for the freedom to come into their life from every sin that binds them for people to be set free from the influence of demons for people to be freed filled with the Holy Spirit that is the church today and it has the priority in this world that's filled with the Holy Spirit not the church that's accustomed itself to the things around but the church that's obedient to the Lord that made a decision to pay any price to have a strong relationship with Jesus we are called to this dear people can we stand I will read the scripture in Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 24 shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the captives of the righteous be delivered but thus says the Lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered for I will contend with him who contends with you and I will save your children Isaiah says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? He asks a question. If he's mighty and he has a prey, he's captured his prey. How can you take the prey from the mighty? And he says, or the captives of the righteous be delivered humanly speaking these things are impossible if someone has victory and he's captured something you can't take that away man on his own cannot set himself free from sin man on his own cannot set himself free from the influence of demons but verse 25 tells us he gives us an answer a very firm answer yes when the question was asked can you take the prey away from the mighty the Lord says yes, yes you can can you take the captives of the righteous away from the victorious yes says the Lord and the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered for I will contend with him not someone else but the Lord himself will contend the Lord stands in the gap for us until or while we try on our own or with our own efforts he doesn't do anything but when we humble ourselves when we come to him and we say Lord I'm so tired I'm tired of walking in this locked circle I'm tired of repenting and once again committing sin repenting and committing sin Lord I understand that this sin controls me you know how many people today are under the control of lustful sins today pornography is so accessible and they can't prevent it they can stop the president from saying certain things and deleting that they can stop sermons on YouTube and on other social media platforms but for some reason pornography they say we can't stop it do you know why? 
потому что хозяином этого because the ruler of this находится не просто человек is not just a man а демоны but demons которые разлагают общество who decay society многие люди они many people have been trapped они мучаются they're tormented how many Christians are afraid to even open up about this because someone else will judge them for their weaknesses but the devil holds these strongholds in their life I remember how Reinhard Bonnke said that a great man a man, a large man a strong looking man came to him and he came to him and said pastor I'm outwardly strong. I can pull a tree up by the roots. But when temptation comes into my life, I am weak like a child. And this strong man, who outwardly looked strong, he couldn't resist sin. But we know in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 25 tells us no matter what the captivity is in your life no matter what the stronghold is in your life God says yes yes thus says the Lord the captives of the mighty will be delivered to rob the house of a strong man you need to have someone stronger that comes yes the devil is called strong yes sin is even called strong but there is a stronger one his name is Jesus Christ hallelujah and today he is here in this place for you to be set free for destruction to take place in the devil's stronghold in your life for you not to live from repentance to repentance but for you to remain in his spirit and where his spirit is there is freedom where there's freedom the devil has no access and he will be cast out your vessel belongs to the Lord that's why you are responsible to keep it in purity and holiness can we worship our Lord we're going to continue worshiping we're going to continue singing let us exalt him he is the Alpha and the Omega he's the beginning and the end what he has begun what he has started in your life allow him to accomplish this because his eyes are watching those who are humble and he gives them mercy do not rely on your own strength you will lose only time and you will come to greater disappointment but today lay everything upon the Lord say Lord I humble myself before you I'm so tired in this life I'm so weak when it comes due to temptation Lord forgive me today I'm in need of your power to touch me for you to break my chains for you to set me free renew my mind cleanse my heart for me to have breakthrough that I would see your glory that I would be a participant of the work that you are doing on this earth in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Beloved, when you sing right now these words, don't sing just because we're singing the song. Allow the Holy Spirit with His light to shine in your hearts the things that hold you back from real victory. Allow him to touch those areas in your life. Someone needs right now to confess his sins. 
сказать о своей слабости to reveal his weaknesses сказать о тех сферах to reveal those areas которые держат вас в рабстве that are holding you in prison позвольте помазанию allow the anointing коснуться вашей боли to touch your pain коснуться вашей проблемы to touch your problem исцелить вас to heal you и освободить вас to deliver you прямо сейчас right now in the name of Jesus Christ I speak right now to every evil spirit that has built up strongholds every rejection every unforgiveness every sin that is becoming systematic every uh, captivity every prison everything that the devil has tied on people's lives in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ from Nazareth I speak to these things to get out devil you're a liar I forbid you from lying to the saints in the name of Jesus Christ I break your actions every curse and every evil in the name of Jesus every addiction in the name of Jesus I break right now in the lives of these people Holy Spirit, touch them right now. Your mighty power, let it touch them right now. Holy Spirit, touch them. Only you know these hearts of the people who are so tired, tired in this life. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. I speak for every stronghold where the devil has room beloved only you know these areas in your life where you've allowed the devil confess these places confess these things you don't need to look for a special person you're standing before the Lord confess it to him right now because many of you have been held back through this from your calling there where God's supposed to use you this is holding you back from those things it's not allowing you to break through confess it right now say to the devil for him to get his hands off of you I call upon the name of the Lord right now the blood of the Holy Lamb that's shed for each one of us I, I call upon the blood of Jesus over every person the blood of Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus Christ is against you devil I intercede right now for my brothers and sisters who are so tired in this life for fighting for themselves fighting against sin your holy blood that is shed for them has power to cleanse them and to wash them and when they confess their sins I call upon the blood of Jesus that cleanses and washes Devil, you have lost them. I prohibit you from sending thoughts their way that they're not free. The blood of Jesus is against you, devil. I break your actions. I break every lie that you've placed in people's lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We destroy right now every stronghold. I go against the spirit of homosexuality, against the spirit of pornography, against the spirit of lust, against the spirit of rejection, against the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, I destroy these strongholds right now. In the name of Jesus.
Every spirit of uh, uh, perversion, get out in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, your presence, your anointing breaks every yoke, every chain of sin. It opens up the prison doors and it sets the captives free. I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I bless every person, every person who's here in this place. We believe in your word. Your word is the foundation in our life. I thank you that you've called us to be in your army, Jesus. We thank you right now we do not war against blood and, and flesh and blood but we war against the powers and principalities against the rulers of this world against the dark spirits under the heavens we thank you Jesus that you have taken away their power and you humiliated them you reigned over them you've given this victory to us today you said that who believes in you those who believe in you shall have signs and wonders following them. You said that you give us authority to step on snakes and scorpions and every power of darkness and nothing will harm us. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit for your presence in this place. I thank you that the weapons of our warfare they're not carnal but they're mighty in the Lord to destroy every stronghold and with this well weapon, we destroy the thoughts and the plans and we take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. That's why, devil, you're a liar. Get out from this place. Leave these people alone whom you've tormented, whom you've pursued, and you've kept in prison. Right now, I speak to you. Get out in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for the freedom that you give. I thank you for the truth that sets us free. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, for the power, and we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear church, in this place, do not be shy, but start to thank the Lord. Every time when we receive from the Lord, by this we don't say, oh, we're going to see what happens. No, the devil sends those kind of thoughts. Oh, I'll try it out. Maybe it'll work out. No, receiving is a firm faith and to stand on that position. Not feeling something, but to believe something. If his word says for us to stand in freedom, Freedom, then receive this and stand in that freedom that the Lord of Jesus has given you. From this point on, all the temptations or all the habits that you have that become strongholds in your life, they will start to pursue you. But it's going to determine on what you do to stand in freedom or to allow yourself to become a slave again. Start from this day forward a life that's different. Everything that held you back prior to this, proclaim freedom over those things. All the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and be free in the name of Jesus. And the last thing, before we thank the Lord, when you leave this place, 
Все будет то же самое. Everything will seem the same. Тот же дом. Same house. Те же обстоятельства. Same circumstances. Та же работа. Same job. Те же самые люди. Same people around. Те же самые магазины. Same stores you go. Тот же интернет. That same internet you have. Но вы другие. But you are different. Пойми. Understand that you are different. Ты можешь снова. And you can once again. Подвергнуть себе рабство. Allow yourself to become a slave. Но нет. But no, you're different. You're free. Stand in that freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us close our eyes again. Let us stretch our hands. When the worship team sings, start to thank Jesus for everything that he's done for you. Thank Jesus for everything that he's accomplished on the Calvary. Everything that he's done. Thank him. Благодари. Thank him. Spirit, we thank you so much. We believe, we believe that from this moment, there are people here who just stepped into a new chapter, stepped into a new season, stepped into freedom that they didn't have before. We believe this in Jesus' name. What we have received right now, God, help us now to stand firmly in it, in Jesus' name. As, this, as we go into this new week, we thank you. No matter what busyness, no matter what worries or tasks we have, we thank you for what we have received right now. And we pray that we would stand firm in this in Jesus' mighty name. We bless one another. We bless our families. We bless our marriages. We bless our children. We bless our work, our neighbors, our city. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, 